detoxification of the body, okay, how the various chemicals in the air and the water and the soil, when you ingest them, how they have a deplastic effect on your physical state. And how the diseases are slowly, slowly setting because of these pollutants which are there in the environment. The basic cause of disease was the pollutants which we have been speaking about till now. So now I'd like you to just hear a little more. I would say straight from the horse's mouth because these people are the ones who go and who interact and who understand the subject at their own levels. We are today fortunate to have Dr. Prasad Prabhakar amongst us, who is a cardio. He owns the Lakshmi Hospitals in Cochin. And uh, he's a very good doctor and he's extremely good in preventive measures. He prepares the certain techniques which are prevent diseases from happening, specifically the diseases through with the cardiorespiratory types. So, Dr. Prasad, in today's date, you've been trying this uh, detoxification process also, and in today's date, the way the environment is, and the way it affects the heart, specifically certain deaths, when people just have sitting, people die just sitting, they have heart attack, and they die. So, how do you explain that this specific technique of detoxification is going to be of any aid, and what actually happens? when the heart is going to go into a trauma and the prevention for that? Well, uh, I think uh, right from the time we wake up till the time we sleep, our body is exposed to a host of environmental toxins. Skin is one of the largest organ as uh, Yogi Ji himself said before. So a lot of chemicals, etc., cosmetic industry, uh, which chemicals which they apply. There are new studies saying that uh, the chemicals are, uh, are absorbed from the skin throw the weight control mechanism gear out, the weight control gear out of system, the system is out of gear due to which obesity becomes prevalent in people who uh, use lot of cosmetics. So obesity is one of the risk factors for uh, cardiovascular disease also. Other than that, the air we breathe is loaded with pollutants. Cigarette smoking also complements this. Now once the air you breathe, it, is, it contains lot of uh, pollutants, especially the carbon related ones. So this carbon goes into the lung and it damages the alveoli, which is the area where the gas exchange, that is the oxygen exchange takes place in the lungs and the oxygenation gets inhibited. So there is a state called hypoxia in the human body where the oxygen level dips in the blood. So due to which the right side of the heart, that is the right ventricle gets affected and the pressure in the right side of the heart increases and due to which they develop a condition called as right sided failure. In medical terminologies we call this as chronic core pulmonale. So this is one aspect of carbon and second thing is all these other toxins from the food we eat and what we inhale, they also uh, call, cause something called as endothelial dysfunction. Now endothelium is the smooth lining of the uh, coronary arteries, all the arteries actually in the human body have got a fine lining that is in the inner side, that is the luminal side of the uh, arteries have got this endothelium. So this endothelium secretes a compound called as nitric oxide. So this nitric oxide is actually a dilator of the arteries, that means it opens the arteries and keeps it in an open state. Now when you uh, inhale all these chemicals, cigarette smoking, carbon etc, this causes endothelial dysfunction due to which release of nitric oxide is decreased. So due to which these arteries can go into spasms. So the coronary arteries are the arteries which supply the muscles of the heart. So this artery when it goes into spasm you start getting these uh, heart attacks. Moreover the food also you eat is also uh, containing a lot of uh, chemicals and uh, preservatives even pesticides from the, for the fruits and vegetables which we consume today, even the milk you consume today is filled with a lot of other chemicals. So all this compound together and cause endothelial dysfunction and the heart attacks at a younger age. Even heart attacks, the majority of them, a lot of them, a good percentage of them have a sudden death. They don't even have time to reach the hospital. Yes, detoxification has a definite role in this. They rid you of your toxins. Various aspects of detoxification are, one is they target the skin and the elementary canal and even the respiratory system also by doing products, uh, procedures like Jalneti, etc. Your air passages are completely cleansed. And though we say saturated fat is bad uh, as per the medical terminology because the lipid, the uh, cholesterol levels are increased as per the medical, uh, like what the literature says. But he is an exception. He means it should be pure deshi ghee, which Yogi ji said. Though it contains saturated fat, it is an exception because it has got a lot of uh, medicinal properties. So by consuming all these, you are able to detoxify the human body to a good extent and prevent these uh, prevent these uh, heart attacks and other cardiovascular and respiratory diseases. 
One more point, it's outside the subject, I would like to comment here, that is with respect to hepatology, there is a condition called a cirrhosis, which has got a lot of causes, alcohol being one of the most commonest forms of them. So whenever these cirrhotic patients, they sometimes they decompensate and they go into a state of coma, what we call as hepatic coma. So when they go into coma, they are unarousable, but their vital signs will be normal. Now to arouse them, one of the major treatments in this is called as bowel wash. Bowel wash means we give an enema. So what the, even you give a lot of medications, we are not able to get them out. So the moment you give them bowel wash for one or two days, immediately they come out from the comatose stage to a conscious state of stage. So that is how important the bowel is, where it contains a lot of organisms, these ammonia producing organisms which go into the human body and damage the liver. So that is the importance, how much uh, importance an enema can do. I just gave an example of hepatology. And compared to the last two days which I have been undergoing this detox regimen, there is a phenomenal increase in energy levels. Even though we are uh, not eating much, our energy levels are much higher. Sleep is also, though we sleep less, we are absolutely fine and comfortable. So there is a phenomenal difference in the last two days what I have experienced with this detoxification regimen with Yogi Ji. Now we have Dr. Manisha here. She is a very famous gynecologist. So let's hear her views that when this pollution gets into the body, what it does to women's reproductive organs, when I say pollution, it's going to be even the pollution of the emotional level and of course the physical level. So what it does to women's reproductive organs, and organs and then secondly, most important, what it does to the fetus, the one who has not been born as yet. The kind of devastating effects which these toxins can have. So we just request Dr. Manisha to speak on this. In fact, it's true that today toxins are there all over the world, in all walks of our life. So, and they have their deleterious effects on all the systems of the body. And the reproductive system is not an exception. The uterus, the ovaries, and even the developing fetus inside the womb. Today, among all other common diseases, there is one more disease called PCOD, which is a very common disorder. It is a polycystic ovarian disease. And it's become rampant over the last few years. It's a lifestyle disease. It has developed because of the wrong eating habits and the unhealthy lifestyle which has come over in the past few years. And the toxins have a great role to play in this. And coming to the reproductive system, the fetus which is developing inside the womb, even before it is coming out, it is already exposed to toxins, heavy metals like cadmium, lithium, lead, which are there in most of our food, uh, food uh, products today. They have so many effects on the developing fetus and on the different systems of the developing fetus. Like they can cause some problems in the developing nervous system, the brain, it can cause some vascular defects in the developing heart, it can cause some renal anomalies, it can cause some anomalies in the ureter, in the bladder, and it can cause some problems in the intestine, the large intestines, the liver. We have no other option to but to live in this world. So the least we can do is maybe to detoxify ourselves and give the developing fetus a healthier world before it gets into this world. Dr. Misha, I'd like to just ask you one thing here. That what about policies, specifically the cerebral policies, which are now just increasing younger age. I've heard there's an entire village in Punjab where every child has got cerebral palsy. So how does how do these toxins they affect the brain? And how do you think this role of this specific science will remove the toxins from the body? How is it going to complement the modern medical science? Yeah, so the toxins play a very major role in the cerebral palsy and the, the only way we can try today because we have to live in this world and we are exposed to all these things and these detoxification procedures, they try to remove most of the toxins which whichever possible to whatever extent it is possible from our body and try to give a healthier and a better environment for the developing patients. Shalini, and she's got a practice of 20 years plus in these sciences, and she specializes in certain techniques in Arabic, which she will explain, will explain better what she specializes in. The interesting thing here is that she's a combination of both the sciences, she's adapted both the sciences. She'll be able to explain to us how actually these techniques are so effective and what's the right way of doing them. Dr. Shalini, can you help us in this? Hello. Yeah, as uh, Yogi Ji has said, we are constantly exposed to toxins. What Ayurveda says, I like to highlight more about the Ayurvedic part. Ayurveda tells 
वॉट इज अ पर्सन एक्चुअली स्वस्थ पर्सन इज समय समाग्नि सम धातु मल क्रिया पर्सन आत्म इंद्रिय मन स्वस्थ अ पर्सन हु इज हेल्दी हैज टू बी विदी ग्लो ऑन द फेस सो वेन वी आर एक्सपोज टू द टॉक्सिन्स द ग्लो एंड ऑल ऑल्सो वेनिशेज अराउंड विथ दैट वॉट एवर वी हैव सीन इन मुंबई पीपल आर डूइंग दैट डिटॉक्सिफिकेशन प्रोसेस इज ओनली टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द बॉडी पार्ट वॉट अबाउट द माइंड माइंड what i read tells when we give any one and all the content which you are using for that it has to be pure along with that we have to have some guru and we have to chant some mantras before giving anima we have to provoke the guru and without the chanting of the mantras the drug that goes inside the body will not have that much effect the effect which we want so just the detoxification without the mantras won't help it has to be done with proper provoke of the guru and the mantra chanting we uh, we have dr mishra here with us who is a scientist and he specializes in chemistry and medicine so let's hear from him that how this detoxification process complements the modern medicine and what damaging effects modern medicines can have if they are not constantly flushed out like little bit i know i know that when a cancer patient is given a chemotherapy for a week after the first dose the body is just flushed with water just plain water to remove the effect of that specific medicine and again when we eat an antibiotic we also have to go through a process of drinking lot of water to flush it out from the body because the residues of these medicines can be very very dangerous now I'm a novice at modern medicine, so let's ask Doctor Mishra what he feels about all this. Yogi ji and everybody is talking about pollutants in the atmosphere and how we get affected with the pollutants in the atmosphere. By virtue of my profession, I created polluted. I have to work in a polluted environment, being a chemist. I have to work with all the type of toxic chemicals, for to making chemicals which are supposedly going to benefit human beings. Uh, 22 years in this profession, I realize. What we are doing is essentially chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. The world is getting filled with chemicals. The food we eat is chemicals. The medicine essentially is treated as being chemicals. And I used to always get scared because each chemical I handle, there has to be a three to four page of data safety data sheet. If you include all the hazards of that chemical which I am going to handle, having worked this, I always get to scared. What's going to happen to me after forty years? Where am I going to be? my what is the state and then i heard a statement from chairman of one of the pharma agencies i cannot name them here and he says our antibiotics work by chance only 30% chance of their being effective and that opened my eyes and having such blind faith in modern medicine then i turned to this kind of wholesome healthy things which will Make the body healthy forever. And yogi is and the more of learning I realize, yes, this is what to look forward to. Then I started reflecting upon any drug we take, any medicine that we take. Each medicine, the more potent the medicine, more the voluminous the data sheets along with it in terms of contradictions and problems it's going to cause, the benefits it may cause. But it's only by chance that these medicines have worked. Based on some of the research that I pushed, and one of the research which I came across and read on in some of the British journals is that in a country, in an incident, when doctors went on strike for three months, the death rate had fallen during that period, which is amazing. I mean, unbelievable thing. And this is a well, well done research. And following upon this, some other countries did a research where they took five thousand patients. By part of normal people, and studied them over 10 years period. They divided this 10,000, 5,000 people into two categories: 2,500, 2,500. One half of those group was not given any medical intervention. They just lived a normal life. And the second group was given medical interventions whenever their parameters fell beyond acceptable medical parameters. And at the end of 10 years, there was no difference. Uh, up to a, by the end of five years, there was no difference in the death rates, essentially same. But when it came to 10 years, by the end of 10 years, 
the group which has medical interventions all along had twice the survival uh, death rate compared to the group which was not given any medical intervention. Which goes on to prove that modern medicine is purely based on chance. It's not really pure science. It's evolving as it's learning based on its effect on human body. And what we can realize is in, in, the, in, the, in the earth, on the earth, so many races, so many original people. I mean, genetically, we are so different, one country to another country. And the same medicine is used to treat people from all over, all over the world. How can the same, same medicine work on different genetically, genetically com composition people? It doesn't work that way. And modern medicine realizes it, but they have limitations in terms of what they can do. So the hope for people who want to have a full, healthy life is to move towards detoxification using proper way of uh, the way it is described and in Sani Dev of Guru. And I think that's what the world has to go to in case they want to have a healthy life. And that's all I right. I just like to add a little bit of what Dr. Mishra said. Nowadays in the West, from where antibiotics have come, like we have uh, people, there are national health care centers all over the world, and I just keep getting these feedbacks because I, let's say I need some kind of an antibiotic, and uh, I request somebody, let's say in the US, so they say, Yogiji, why do we need to give an antibiotic? Because here, when a child falls sick, the doctors say the child will heal on its own. So it, it is shocking because it's actually shocking the kind of consumption we have antibiotics here in India. There's not even a fraction in those countries which have actually invented the antibiotics. Because the, now they understand that once a medicine goes inside the body, it takes a minimum period of seven days to flush it out of the body after it does the damage. Minimum period of seven days. So imagine if you repetitively have, keep on having medicines and if you're not flushing them out, what kind of toxicity the body will start to collect and what kind of damage is going to happen. Now we have heard experts who are sitting here who are giving their valued views on the subject. See, when the body is rid of toxins, a very interesting phenomenon happens. Some kind of a, a shine or some kind of a glow uh, comes around the aura of a person. And that glow is very much visible even on the face. If you are doing any kind of detoxification process, the first symptom that you will get, is I call it a symptom, that you will have a glow which is going to be surrounding your face and your whole body. What is this glow? This is what I was talking about when I started speaking about all this, that in the Satyo, there used to be no disease because there was no pollutant. Now it's very interesting, when the body is going to be healthy, it is going to glow because that's the inherent nature of the human being, glow. So when yogis, they develop a certain kind of a glow, after that they slowly slowly have to go to the Himalayas, they go back to where they have come because that glow is not accepted or absorbed by any people who are around them because of the contaminants. That's why it was said that four and a half thousand years back all the gods went back. There are no more gods here excepting the sun god which was left behind to look after all of us. It is these toxins only which basically suppress the body so much that it hardly comes in. And you do look absolutely masticized as if something is very desperately wrong with you. It might not be a disease but it's the effect of the toxicity. Toxicity can be medical or it can be non-medical. But toxicity is toxicity. So by not commenting on what's medical science and what it's not the attributes, I am not competent to comment on that. So all I can say is that whatever toxicity that goes in the body, through medicines or through food or through air or through touch or through whatever, that toxicity has to be removed if you want to die healthy.